Hey, it's Jeff Sauer here to answer your questions about GDPR, Google Analytics, and IP anonymization. And so I've been getting a lot of questions about my GDPR series of videos, and this is one of the most common questions I get. And that is, straight up, tell me, Jeff, can I use Google Analytics and be in the good graces of GDPR? Or am I breaking the rules? And what is the bare minimum I need to do in Google Analytics to stay GDPR compliant. Well, in this video, I'm gonna do my best to explain to you how to run Google Analytics without falling into violation of the GDPR rules. Let's talk about GDPR and IP anonymization in Google Analytics. And before we get started, for anybody who's new to these videos, I've been sharing my weekly GDPR learnings over at my YouTube channel. And you can subscribe to this playlist or check it out at the URL below, but if you hand type in that URL, you're probably a crazy person because that's almost impossible to decipher. So make sure you check out the link in our YouTube video or the link in our blog post at jefflytics.com to get at this playlist. And you can see all the videos together in their full glory by following that link. And I'm gonna continue on the series by sharing some questions that I keep hearing and or have on my mind as I continue my GDPR journey. So let's get to those questions. Number one, does Google Analytics comply with GDPR out of the box? Number two, what personal information does Google Analytics collect, both out of the box and using some of their advanced features? Number three, what is the impact of GDPR compliance on your Google Analytics data? And number four, what will I lose if I eliminate personal data from Google Analytics? So let's answer these questions and maybe these answers are gonna open up a few more as well. First of all, does Google Analytics comply with GDPR out of the box? The answer is no, Google Analytics does not comply with the GDPR rules right out of the box, at least according to my understanding. Now you might be asking yourself why and is it a big deal? The reason why Google Analytics is not compliant is because Google collects personal data automatically. Now it's not a lot of personal data, but it's enough to pay attention. And that leads us to question number two. What personal information does Google Analytics collect? Left you on a bit of a cliffhanger there, but since we are watching this all in one concise video, I'm gonna get right to it. Here's the answer for you. In a standard Google Analytics installation, IP addresses are the personal data that Google Analytics collects on somebody every time that they use Google Analytics. Now it doesn't sound like a lot, but IP addresses are the personal data that's being collected. Now if you have an advanced Google Analytics install, there are gonna be many forms of personal and third-party data that are being collected. Things like demographics, display features, user IDs, custom dimensions, basically a lot of your customizations to make Google Analytics centered around your users any customizations you do may add in more personal data into Google Analytics. So in simple terms, if you have the standard version of Google Analytics, here's the cool thing about this. The personal data in a standard install of GA is not very much, and you can use IP anonymization to eliminate personal data in Google Analytics. Basically, you can anonymize people's IP addresses. The one piece of personal data collected in Google Analytics, you can use a function to easily anonymize IP addresses. So how does this function work? I thought you'd never ask. Now here's an article directly from Google that explains to you how this function works. And I'm gonna give it to you in more layperson's terms. And this picture really helps seal the deal. This is again a picture from Google's support documentation. And as you can tell, the end user, if their IP address is 12.214.31.144, putting the fourth set of digits, or the octet as they call it, to zero, anonymizes the IP so you can no longer track that individual person. So all you need to do is to turn on this IP anonymization or scrambler feature, whatever you wanna call it, inside of your Google Analytics data, and you are no longer collecting personal information on this person. So how can you do this? Well, there's a few different ways you can do it, but the one that's probably the most relevant to you is by updating your Analytics JavaScript tag. Now this syntax is gonna be different depending on which version of Google Analytics you have. So I'm gonna go through several options and share with you several links on which one of the different versions of Google Analytics you might have to show you how you can anonymize your IP addresses. Let's start with the newest version of Google Analytics, which is gtag.js. And if you want to, within your gtag, you start a tag that says gtag, 
you have a parameter that says config, you put your Google Analytics tracking ID in there, and then at the end, you put your parameter anonymize IP, and you say true. Now, if I were you, I would go to the developer website of Google Analytics, and I would take this code directly from them, so you don't get any of the syntax wrong. But this is the way you anonymize IP addresses in gtag.js. Now, what if you have the, I guess, older version of Google Analytics, even though it's not that old, the analytics.js, which is universal analytics. Now, this one's a little bit different. You say GA, and you set, and then the next one is anonymize IP. And instead of being anonymize underscore IP, it's anonymize IP with a capital I, and then you set it to true. And this is something that is in addition to your account declaration of your account ID and the page view tag. So this is different. It doesn't have a rhyme or reason as to why the I is capitalized and there's no underscore. It's confusing. I don't get it, but this is how Google decided to implement it, probably because they have a different team of people working on gtag.js as they do in analytics.js. But I digress. And if you're old school and you're using ga.js, shame on you first of all, or shame on you if it's your choice. I'm sorry if you're working with a company that's still stuck on a technology that's like eight years old. But here is the syntax. You need to say underscore gat dot underscore anonymize capital I P. And you do that in its own push method. It doesn't affect your account or the page view tag, sort of like how it works in analytics.js. You put that in your account, you put it in the exact order that they mention here in the support article, and you are gonna anonymize your IP addresses even if you're using GA.js. And as a bonus, if you're using GA.js and your company is crazy and they won't let you update your website or put code in place, the fines for GDPR are high enough that you probably will get them motivated to change the code on the website because there's a lot of money at risk here if they do not comply. So there you go, there's your way to get your website code updated and maybe you can even convince them to put analytics.js or gtag.js on your website. Moving on, what if you use a plugin? For example, Monster Insights for WordPress. All you need to do is check this button to anonymize IP addresses and you should be good to go. And what it does, even though this documentation looks like it's using ga.js, I'm pretty sure they're using analytics.js. It just adds that function to your code for you on your behalf. And finally, within Google Tag Manager, you can say fields to set in your Google Analytics settings variable. You set that field name, anonymize IP. Make sure you pay attention to the capitalization. This is for universal analytics, anonymize, and then capital I and P, and then the value is equal to true. And this is gonna be the equivalent of doing this in your code like I showed in analytics.js. Got that? Hopefully I covered all the different scenarios you might be using to put Google Analytics on your own site. On the other hand, if you have an advanced install of Google Analytics, you're going to need to make a choice. You are going to need to either decide to eliminate personal data collection or receive explicit consent from your users to opt in. Now I'm thinking I should share more on consent in an upcoming video but I would love for you to leave me a comment and let me know that you wanna hear my thoughts on creating a consent video. And if you do that, maybe I'll create a video for you. Number three, what is the impact of GDPR compliance on your Google Analytics data? Now for standard installs, the only effect of GDPR on your Google Analytics data is the effect of an IP anonymization. And you're probably wondering, what is the measurement impact of IP anonymization? Let's take a look. And actually, this is not my study, but this is a great study by Huyan at ConversionWorks. And she went and she created an impact assessment on the IP anonymization on your Google Analytics data. Now, I met Huyan, and hopefully I'm saying that right, this year, earlier this year, in Hungary at the Super Week conference. And she is brilliant and knows a lot about Google Analytics. So I trust her opinion and I trust her data. And I've made sure to link to it here as well because not only does she share her methodology that she collected, but she actually gives you access to the raw data as well if you wanted to investigate further. So in Huyan's study, what she shows is that the impact of IP anonymization really, really only affects the city level accuracy of IP address targeting. As you can see here, very rarely was the country falsely identified or the continent. It really comes down to a city level of accuracy. And within her data, you can see here that city level actually varies depending on the different geography that you're in. Europe is basically the main place where city level accuracy declines when you do IP anonymization. And the reason that I can come up with for that is that their sample data set is mostly in Europe. And there might also be an impact due to densely populated cities in Europe. 
I'm not sure, that might be what it is, or it might not be, but that's the only thing I can think of. Now, if you look at the link right below this table, you can see there's a full report that she links out to. And if you go to this link at conversionworks.co.uk, you can check that one out as well. And finally, our final question is, what do I lose if I eliminate personal data from GA? So we've pretty much laid out what your repercussions are here, but let's bottom line it. You are going to have less accurate city level reporting data in your Google Analytics account. And it's not even going to be completely inaccurate, it's just going to be less accurate. And specifically, it's going to be for desktop and tablet traffic. If you look at Huyan's study one more time, you can see that city level accuracy doesn't really go down all that much with mobile tracking, but it goes down more significantly with desktop and tablet traffic. And to that I say, la di friggin da. That really doesn't make a difference because guess what? Your city level data is never really that accurate anyway. And even if they go and say, for example, it was a suburb of Minneapolis, St. Paul, it's still gonna be accurate to Minneapolis and St. Paul once we do this consolidation. And in fact, your dots will probably get a little bit bigger for the main city, and it's gonna get a little bit smaller for the outlets around that area. And if you are doing analytics and being very specific around city level data, then you're not really doing the type of analytics that I usually recommend. Unless you are a local business that only operates in a handful of cities, you are not really gonna suffer from this level of data. And if you are a local business that only does business in a handful of cities in your surrounding area, and you're in the United States, for example, then you probably don't really need to worry about GDPR because you're not selling into these countries that are affected by the regulation. Now, if you are a small shop doing just local marketing in Europe, you will be affected by this more than most, but even then you are still gonna have a fair level of accuracy. And I'm gonna end it with a spoiler alert. IP addresses give the wrong city all the time already. I can tell you this because every time that I log into my WordPress dashboard, it tells me that I logged in from a city that's four towns over and over 20 miles away. So most IP databases are not accurate right now. Google Analytics seems to have a very accurate one. It is gonna get less accurate. You're gonna lose about one third of the exact identifications of a city. But to be honest, that is a small price to pay for compliance. So I don't think you lose that much with IP anonymization. I think Huyan study definitely proves that out. I think that Doug Hall is well dench, and I'm glad that he introduced me to his coworker Huyan earlier this year. And let's leave with an action item. You should anonymize your IPs in Google Analytics. I don't think you have a lot to lose, and I think you have a lot to gain if you do that. And I'm gonna close this video with one final thing. What other questions do you have about GDPR? Send them my way, and hopefully I can answer them in a future video.